Hi, and welcome to what US cities can learn from Sydney when it comes to decarbonisation and electrification of apartment buildings. Danell Baird is the CEO of US startup Block Power, which is aiming to decarbonise US cities. And according to Danell, there are five things that you need in place in order to electrify an entire city. Sufficient policy, political will, data availability, financial instruments and workforce considerations. And in this comparative analysis between US cities and Sydney, we'll have a look at each of these. The biggest difference between the US and Australia is population. So there's 13 times the population in the US compared to Australia. And also more of those people live in apartments, condos, HOAs, uh, at 35% of the total population, where just 15% lives in apartments in Australia. But the thing that's most interesting is uh, the installed cost per watt of solar photovoltaics. Now, Australia has an installed cost per watt of $1, where the US has between $2.20 to $3.50 per watt to install, depending on the state. So how did Australia get into the position to create the lowest cost of energy delivered in human history via solar photovoltaics. So we're going to have a look at Danelle's first item, which is whether sufficient policy exists for apartment buildings in Sydney. The Australian Federal Government introduced a solar rebate program in 2007. Since 2011, a number of municipal councils have given free energy audits to apartment buildings in Sydney. The New South Wales State Government introduced the Energy Savings Scheme in 2009, which was a big driver behind LED lighting upgrades. The National Built Environment Rating Scheme was extended to apartment buildings in 2018. Uh, the New South Wales Government lowered the voting threshold based upon unit entitlements to 50% to increase the uptake of sustainability measures in 2021. In 2023, the New South Wales State Government allocated $10 million to incentivise EV charging in apartment buildings. And in 2023, five municipal councils in Greater Sydney introduced local sustainability rebates on top of the federal and the state rebates. Uh, Australia has more electricity market deregulation than the US. There are over 114 energy retailers but it's noted that 64% of the population are, are still with the big three. Uh, there are some issues still with uh, the privatisation of the gas distribution network, um, which was sold to State Grid of China and Singapore Power, and that's delaying the move to domestic hot water heat pumps in some instances in Sydney. But the Australian energy regulator has allowed uh, microgrids, which are called uh, embedded electrical networks, and these have rapidly grown and now account for about 1% of the apartment buildings having their own microgrid. So I would say that there is sufficient policy in Sydney to support the drive to electrification. Now, this is the slide which really brings it home. 37.7% of standalone houses in Australia have rooftop solar. And then if we look at the US, just 4.1% have make and made the leap to rooftop solar. Now, while apartment buildings in, in Australia have lagged behind residential houses on solar, uh, it was natural that the apartment buildings would start following what was happening with this dramatic explosion of solar photovoltaic on residential houses. And you can see that... Uh, there's a long way to go for the US to really play catch up and solar photovoltaics are really at the heart of the electrification challenge. We tend to think of the Sahara Desert as the very best place to put solar panels on the planet. But what's interesting is if you flip Australia to the same latitude that it is in the Southern Hemisphere and show where it would land in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see Australia is pretty much bang right on top of the Sahara Desert. And if you think that 
that picture of Australia superimposed on the Sahara Desert was interesting. Well, here's one of Australia superimposed on the US. And you can see there is some overlap in terms of latitude here. So the solar production will be just as good in some of those southern states of the United States as it is in Australia. So how did Sydney-based apartment blocks get to 2% of solar penetration? Well, basically, this has been the result of new developments having a high proportion of those having solar installed from day one and over a dozen municipal councils spending over a decade promoting solar to apartment buildings across Greater Sydney. You can also see that uh, there are other technologies that haven't penetrated it as much, such as um, heat pumps for domestic hot water. Heat pumps are used quite commonly for pool heating in strata buildings, but it's a bigger challenge to get apartment buildings to move to heat pumps for domestic hot water via a common hot water plant. Uh, but the other places where there are success, uh, almost 1% of the apartment buildings in Sydney have microgrids installed into them and about 1% of the apartment buildings also uh, have uh, participated in an energy rating scheme that's national but was developed here in the state of New South Wales. So let's look at Donnell's second item which is political will and this is an area where Australia and Sydney has suffered in comparison with the US. But there is now a alignment at municipal, state and federal governments on the drive for electrification. There are a number of uh, municipal councils in Sydney that declared climate emergency and uh, the New South Wales state government introduced incentives for people to buy EVs, which has seen Australian EV percentage of new sales rise to a similar level to the US. And there have also been a lot of not-for-profits that have been working in advocacy over a number of years to build up the political will to electrify and decarbonise Sydney. Every city has some marquee environmental developments and Central Park in Sydney is one of those. It was a green building that featured a green wall and a heliostat and its own water recycling plant and it also has tri-generation and ex exports power under the road to a nearby university. The next item that Donnell refers to is data availability. Now one of the challenges in Sydney is not all the apartment buildings have smart meters installed into them either for the individual apartments or the common area or the house services. Uh, we are fortunate that there are solar calculators such as the Australian Solar Photovoltaic Institute's tool which has been made available to all apartment buildings in Sydney. The Australian Renewable Energy Agency or ARENA gave a grant to a local Sydney startup Watch Watchers uh, to create My Energy Marketplace and using subsidised electricity monitoring devices they were able to uh, work out a great use case for electricity monitoring in apartment buildings is capacity analysis for new electric vehicles. Also the Neighbours for Apartment Buildings Energy Rating System is predominantly capturing its data through Sydney uh, with close to 200 buildings that have been rated in that uh, in Greater Sydney. Also the New South Wales Government set up the Strata Hub uh, during COVID to get a better idea of who was living in the residential apartment buildings in Sydney and that's also connected to a New South Wales government aerial mapping service so that you can see the outline of each apartment building uh, from an aerial perspective and the Electrify Strata projects mapped 33,000 strata schemes across 17 high density municipalities in Sydney and which ones have solar microgrids, batteries, EV charging and heat pumps for domestic hot water. In particular there's a shout out to the team at Watt Watchers for their My Energy Marketplace project and uh, that was 
a project that saw their electricity monitoring device installed into 5,000 locations across the nation. And there is a report on some of the learnings from that project that you can find. There's a link below. One of the areas that Danelle has uh, focused on at Block Power is bringing the right financial instruments to the decarbonisation and electrification of multifamily housing. And that's an area which uh, Block Power excels in, and we don't have something quite the same in Sydney at this point in time. What we do have are power purchase agreements, and these have actually not been that popular with the Strata audience. Um, apartment buildings in Australia can take out Strata loans, but that's unsecured lending, so the lending rate is typically above 8%. And that hasn't really been successful in driving the adoption of solar to this point in time. Energy financing is available to strata buildings through a few vendors, uh, but there hasn't been a way to really mobilise the Australian government's Clean Energy Finance Corporation haircut loan rates and get that into the apartment building sector. Uh, Australian tech bil billionaire Mike Cannon Brooks, uh, he is famous for uh, a tweet exchange with Elon Musk, which resulted in the first grid scale big battery being installed in South Australia, has invested in an energy financing startup called Bright. And in the Australian Capital Territory, which is similar to Washington DC, they've now paired a loan product with the government rebates to create a zero dollar down solar offer for apartment buildings in the Australian Capital Territory. But that's not available in Sydney. So that's not the explanation for the high rates of solar take up on apartment buildings in Sydney at this point. It really should be put down to property valuation uplift and apartment buildings trying to increase their property values in a, in a, in a city that has a, a very dynamic real estate market. When it comes to the property valuation uplift I was referring to, one of the two largest real estate online listing sites in Australia is domain.com.au and they worked out that uh, there's a price differential of about $72,000 property valuation increase in 2022 for apartments or units as they're called in Sydney that have these energy efficient features inside them. The last area we're going to have a look at that Danelle refers to are workforce considerations. Now, Sydney is blessed to have the University of New South Wales here. That's where the Perk cell was invented, which is now a technology embedded in over 75% of solar panels installed globally. This engineer gravity around the University of New South Wales draws a lot of international students who come here to specialise in solar engineering. But also the trade jobs in Sydney are very lucrative compared to other markets around the world. With a minimum wage of US fifteen seventy nine per hour, these tradies, as we call them in Sydney, are an important part of the electrification and decarbonisation effort. Uh, there's the Climate Salad Startup Ecosystem here, which helps uh, startups that are in this environmental decarbonisation space um, move forward in achieving their goals and ambitions. And the one area that is getting a little bit better but Australia doesn't have what the US has is we don't have something equivalent to the US's Inflation Reduction Act. But we did have a three billion allocation in the last Albanese budget and Saul Griffith considers that to be the first electrification budget in Australia's history. Having a vibrant solar industry also means there are solar startups. And one great example for apartment buildings is Illum, who create the SolShare. That's an IoT device which can share a single solar system amongst 15 apartments in Australia or 10 apartments in the US market. And it's been successfully installed in the US in a number of places like Florida, Georgia, and Mississippi. Here is an example of that Illum Energy SolShare being installed into Orlando in the US. So just to recap, this is what we think an electrified and decarbonised apartment building would look like. It would use heat pumps for domestic hot water, it would have batteries, it would have solar photovoltaic, LED lighting, 
uh, you might use reverse cycle air conditioning and you would have electric vehicle charging. So just to finish up with a case study, here's an example of a building that participated in a municipal government program where they had assistance from a sustainability consultant and over a period of six years they did LED lighting upgrades, hot water upgrades, they installed the electricity monitoring device from Watches, and they decommissioned a central cooling tower that used to serve all of the apartments in the building and moved to a system where everyone has their own reverse cycle air conditioning. They've also installed solar and batteries for the common areas and they've applied to the New South Wales government for an EV charging infrastructure co-funding grant. So the net upshot of this is they are now saving 76 tonnes of carbon per annum in an apartment building that's only got 62 units. And the common or health services bill is now down 72%. So there are great opportunities to decarbonize and electrify apartment buildings and hopefully you've been able to see there are some examples where with the high penetration of solar photovoltaics and apartment buildings starting to install batteries as well there's a great opportunity for US cities to follow some of these learnings from Sydney and decarbonize and electrify in the northern hemisphere thank you